Every year, billions of liters of wastewater are processed worldwide. The byproduct of this treatment is typically seen as waste, but a new technology being developed in Metro Vancouver could change that within the region and all over the world. Metro Vancouver and partners are embarking on an exciting four-year project that is the first of its kind. Using a technology called hydrothermal processing, wastewater biomass from Metro Vancouver treatment plants will be converted into transportation fuels. What we're doing here with hydrothermal processing is to pressurize wastewater biomass, which are essentially the carbon bits that are removed at a wastewater treatment plant, and transform that into a bio-crude oil. And that bio-crude oil can then be converted into a low carbon fuel. Parkland Fuel Corporation is a partner on this groundbreaking project, and their refinery in Burnaby will co-process the bio-crude provided by Metro Vancouver's HTP site. Co-processing is taking existing refinery infrastructure where we normally use crude feedstock and we're integrating renewable feedstocks such as tallow, canola or bio crude from hydrothermal liquefaction into our facility. So we're co-processing both traditional crude as well as low carbon renewable feedstocks. Metro Vancouver's Anasis Island wastewater plant in Delta will host the world's first HTP system connected to a fully operating facility. The plan is to install the HTP system adjacent to the Anasis wastewater treatment plant. So in this site, we're expecting to have in construction in 2021 and in 2022, we're expecting to have the full HTP system operational. So Metro Vancouver has billions of dollars of infrastructure in the ground. And that infrastructure is 24-7 collecting essentially carbon fragments that can in fact be converted into something useful. The benefits of co-processing something like Metro Vancouver's biomass is closing the loop on the circular economy of finding a home for a waste product and repurposing that into a higher value product such as gasoline, diesel or jet fuel. This technology is exciting because it has the potential to dramatically change the way we have been doing business and it would be doing so by lowering overall costs, minimizing residual waste and engage a large industrial partner to create a low carbon circular economy. What we at Parkland found is that uh, collaboration and partnerships are so important in being able to find these solutions and innovation in the low carbon space to be able to create that circular economy. When we talk about the circular economy, yes, it's about the technology, but it's also about the people and making the connections. So uh, the lesson there really is uh, go out there, learn about uh, different industries, learn about different fields of science, and you never know where the next big idea is going to come from.